Okay, so what we'll be covering today is actually um, almost three quarters of this part. Um, so last week, what we have done is on your FESTA file. So this week, what we're going to do is on GMBank file. How do you read GMBank file? The only thing that I will not cover is on this writing of GMBank file. Okay. Um, you can actually manipulate GMBank files. That is the last few slides starting from about slide number 20 or so. Okay. So you can actually look it up yourself. The reason why I'm not covering is you almost never need to write your own GMBank file. Only, only, there's only in specific conditions then you write your own GMBank file. Okay. Most of the time, if you are developing some, some, some form of bioinformatics software, it will be the engineers that will write the GMBank file. You will not be writing them. But very commonly for your project, you can be reading Jim Bang files. So reading is more important than writing. The last time I actually need to write a Jim Bang file using BioPython was in 2011. So it was nine years ago. So the last nine years, I did not write a Jim Bang file myself. Okay. Which also means that even if I teach you today how to write a Jim Bang file, by then, if you require, you'll forget everything as well. So let's not bother about it. Now, the main thing is for GMBank files, GMBank record is much more complicated than your FESTA records. Okay? So one GMBank record can, is up to here. Okay? So you have GMBank record. It contains a lot of information. For example, your locus, definition, accession number, the source organisms, references, there can be multiple references, there can be comments. The most important part is this thing known as features. Features tells you, let's say from which location to which location, what is it? So this is the feature. So source is a feature, gene is a feature, CDS. CDS stands for coding sequence, is a feature. Then your location, so position, base one to base one, two, six, three. Okay. Then all these are qualifiers. So it tells you more about the uh, feature. Okay. So here it tells you what is the organism, what is the molecular type, where is the isolation from. So um, taxonomy, which country come from, gene and so on. Okay. So remember in your FESTA file or in your translation, you have different translation um, what you call it, translation um, tables. So it actually includes here as well. Okay. So where is the translation? What is the product? If you translate into protein, what do you get? So this, if, we if the whole sequence is translated into protein, then this is actually the translation, which is actually the amino acid sequence. Okay. After that, you have a whole list of your um, nucleotide sequence. Between if you have multiple rec gene bank records in a gene bank file, between each gene bank record, you have this double slash. So it goes to the next record and so on. Okay. Then you repeat the whole structure over again. Okay. So you can actually have one gene bank record that is the whole chromosome. So you have thousands and thousands of features. Okay. That can work as well. So as you realize that gene bank record is more complicated to pass or more commonly read than your FESTA records. FESTA record, you can actually read by hand, which you have done in the last tutorial. You have read your FESTA record by hand. Jimbe record, please do not bother. Okay. So what it does is, inside this sequence class, remember we, have, we always do um, your bio, import sequence IO. Inside this sequence class, there is actually this object known as your sequence record. Sequence record is used to hold all the information inside your gym bank file or gym bank record. So one gym bank record equals to one sequence record. Okay. And from it, what you can do is try to get as much information as possible. Okay, so this is something that you have to note. 
different versions of BioPython actually have different implementation of these sequence records. Okay. So the newer ones will have more information than the older ones. So what is in these sequence records? First, your attribute, so the record dot sequence, that is your usually the sequence itself. The ID, that is your accession number most common. The name, sometimes it's your accession number as well. The description, description is essentially this definition line. Okay, so the name, this is actually most likely the name. The description is actually a definition. All right, then let's continue. You have the letter annotations. So the annotations contains a lot more information. So annotations, one gym bank file will have one set of annotations. So this is one annotation. Okay, so your references, all these are one annotation. The comments, one annotation. Then it could have multiple features. Okay. So you can have multiple features. It's a list of another object known as feature uh, sequence features. That's why you realize that reading a GBank file is a lot more complicated. Okay. How many of you have looked through your tutorials? The tutorial for this chapter. Anyone? If you have seen the tutorial, please raise up a hand. Or nobody even touched the tutorial. So you have not uploaded yet. Have not uploaded yet, man? I thought I uploaded already. Yeah, then tell me why. Because I uploaded already, that means I never open it. Let's me open it. Uh huh. Okay, it's good thing. Materials, lecture materials. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody tells me. Eh? Yeah? Enable already, ah? Uh? Ambrose, gonna check, quick. Oh, yeah, never mind. Okay. So, what I have. Okay, so why not you take um, two or three minutes or even five minutes, go and look through the tutorial itself. Because then it will help you to understand what I want from you from this chapter. You can look through the tutorial itself. Not, not, not this. Hmm. Okay. Read through a tutorial. Okay, please everyone go and download the tutorial and look through the tutorial so you have some idea what we are trying to get out of it. Let me check that. Put Sonic Hedgehog inside. Great, I forgot to put my Sonic Hedgehog inside. Okay, okay, okay. Even that you can't do it, so... Um, Sonic H. Main file. Where is my son of Hitchhock? Uh, Hitchhock, Hitchhock, where are you? Jim Main file. Yes. <clears throat> so, this is a son of Hitchhock. Okay, once you have read, read through your tutorial, just show your hands. Raise up your hand. Isn't it, isn't it tutorial 7? No, no, tutorial 7, no? Yeah. Right, tutorial 7, yeah. Okay, and rows, the rest, just read through first. At least have some idea what we are expecting. Okay. 
I know. Oh, Joanne, are you able to get back to Singapore already? They are coming back tomorrow, okay. So, Gwen, please tell Dr. Lake or whoever. Um, yeah. Let's wait for Ryan to hang and Rebecca. Now it's not for you to do, uh, just read through only. So at least you have some idea what to focus on during the lecture. Okay, so I'll put down your hands. <clears throat> now, so basically what we can do is you read a uh, Jim Bang file. So your Jim Bang file, you also use the IO pass to read the Jim Bang file. Make sure that you, um, the option, the file type is Jim Bang, G-E-N, uh, not G-E-N-E. -E. And then let's say you read the first GMAN file, so it's record number zero. What you can do is you go and look through what is inside. So this is exactly what we want to do. We want to look through what is inside. So let us just run this. So I I read my GMAN file. I throw everything into my GB records. Okay. So let me run this. On this network. So I throw everything on GB records. Now, the length of my GB records, oops, tells me how many records do I have in total. So, okay, so I have eight GMAM records inside. Okay. Then I just call, uh, maybe I just call R. So my GMAM record. Put out the first record to show you. So records zero. Okay. So R is my first record. Now, if I just print R, what it will show is it will show me a section of the GMAN records. Okay. So it, it's very hard to read here. In fact, you cannot really process any information. What we want to find out is using this function known as directory, dir to go and hunt down what is inside. So we look through what is inside. So inside contains your annotations, your database X reference, description, features, format, IDs, and so on. Okay, so let's look at one thing at a time. The easiest way to learn how um, GymBank file works is to have a GymBank file and look at the corresponding section. What does it mean? So let's say for this GMAN record, let's take this GMAN record, this definition, where does it go under? Because remember, here there is no definition. Where does it go under? 
Okay, so let's look at it one at a time. So R, and we take ID, for example, it gives me the accession number. So the ID is actually the accession number or the version number. Okay. Then, uh, why am I going through all this? Then I look at what is inside name. So name, this, so where does this map under? So it's actually mapped under your accession. So ID is version, name is accession, or name can even be locus. Actually, we do not have any idea because these two are the same. Locus and accession are the same here. After that, so we have done this. Let us look at description. Description. Now, this is a description. So the closest it matches will be the definition line. Right? So this is how you look through one step at a time. Uh, description. Let's not look at annotation first. Names. Okay, this is uh, the rest of it. It should be. Okay, let's try at letter annotation. No idea what on earth this is. So it doesn't have letter annotations. Okay. So then let's look at annotations itself. Now, so annotations, it contains basically half of everything that you have. So you see from molecular type, topology, all the way to taxonomy, references. References, there's multiple references already. So it seems that your annotations covers almost all the way from here to uh, maybe even up to this part. So all these are annotations and you realize that it has a bit of this part here. Okay, the, the data. So for example, mRNA, the date. You see the date is actually given to you. The, the file date. Data file division, so it's IMV, IMV is here. The molecule type is mRNA, linear, topo the topology is linear. So all this is read somewhere. Okay, so it starts to become more, more and more complicated. So then we can go down each section. Okay? Because this is a dictionary, it also means that we can actually pull out individual information from it. For example, I want the source. Okay, data doesn't have dictionary source. So here is a dictionary. So I have to use, let's say this, say source. So comes a dictionary. Okay. So this is how you pull out different items. And we did it. Taxonomy is a list by itself. So if I want to read the taxonomy, oh, basically just change the um, dictionary key into taxonomy. So this is the taxonomy. Okay, essentially this taxonomy maps onto this. Okay. The so there's also other things that we can look at. For example, this is actually a list, then references. References, it gives us a bit more information. What on earth does it say? So here we have references. In fact, there's reference number one. Okay, there's reference number two. We can have multiple references. So let's just check. References, does it give us anything first? It gives us something. Okay. So let's look at the length of reference. What we expect is there are two references. Okay. So we have two references. Right. So then we can go inside and dig at what is reference number one or reference zero. 
gives us a title. So we can go inside, dig a bit more. What is inside reference? Okay. So reference, there are authors, there are comment, journal, and so on. Title. Okay. So we know that there's something called title. Let's look at that. it give us the title that we want what we expect is the first reference title so this should be the one that give us okay nerve regeneration is something 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 okay. it does it give us a title okay. yeah, it gives us a title does it give us the authors authors so the authors is a is a just a string so the authors is essentially just a string. Okay. Then what else does it give us? Does it give us a journal? Of course, it gives us a journal. Journal. Okay, it's unpublished. So let's look at, does it matches unpublished? Yep, journal is unpublished. Okay. Um, interestingly, there's actually this thing called location. What does it say? Okay, so here. It gives us a feature location, exact position, exact position. So basically, the location is essentially talking about this. All right. We can even go and dig what is inside location. So it's actually a list. Okay. But location, let's say location zero, the start location. It actually gives us the position, the strength, and so on. So all these are important information that you can start to dig. The more you dig, the worse it becomes. Okay. So we are done with the annotations. So this is where you start to look at different things. And remember in your tutorial, that is what I want you to help me find out. For example, do I have a gene symbol? Do I have the translated product, all this? So how do you get all this information? Okay, let's go back to here. We have this thing, this part that we have not looked at features called features. So let's look at features. Just pull out. Okay, so we have three features. Feature one, feature two, feature three. The first one says source, gene, CDS. So let's look at our GeneBank file. Where does it matches? So we matches into these three features. This one feature. The gene is the second feature. The CDS is the third feature. Make sense? So within each feature, it can give us different information as well. So let's hunt now what is in feature one. Feature. The first feature, okay, give us some information, the position, source, and so on. Okay, so let's um, again use this directory function to dig through. Okay. It gives us an ID, qualifiers. Okay, so let's look at the qualifiers. Qualif, uh, okay, qual, maybe not qualifiers, but qualifiers. So here, organism, mold type, isolation source, references, and dictionary uh, country. So essentially, it maps to these few components. <clears throat> Make sense? So technically, if we are quite sure that it maps to these few components, the second feature, that means feature first index, it should only have this gene. All right, so let's look at that to see whether do we get it correct. So this second feature should have only one component inside the qualifier. That is the gene, which we expect to have. So it maps to this guy. How about the third one? We expect this few information to give us the gene, codon start, product, protein ID, and translation. Okay, so let's look at it, dig through. us all the information 
So how do I go inside? Because this is an ordered dictionary. It's basically a dictionary. What we can do is qualifiers. If you want to get the translation, just go to translation. Okay. Then you have the translation. Remember the translation is actually in a list because there can be alternative alternate splicing. We then can be alternate translation. Have you learned about alternate splicing before? Anyone remember no what's alternate splicing? Yes, Ambrose, your hands up means what? Anyone knows what's alternate splicing? Responding. Uh, is it the you got the three splice then you can like mix and match? What do you three splice and mix and match? You think you're cooking or what? No, I never mind. It's gonna be better lah, quick. Uh so when I think is when the mRNA like trying to do the post translation like uh, transcription modification then you're cut into introns and exon yeah. then these introns right can be arranged different ways so like maybe one three two or one two three or something or that's two or three something like that something like this correct yeah okay so let me just show you how does it work uh what am i what am i doing here okay so let's say your gene you have your standard you raise this guy. Okay. So your gene, you have something like this. So you have intron, um, your exon A, exon B, let's say exon C, exon D. Okay. So there are four exons. Normally during your out, during your post translational modification, you end up with the four exons combined together. So A, B. C and D. Okay. But certain cells or certain cell type, you can have this thing called alternate, alternate splicing, which means that you actually write down drawing up this way. Okay. So if alternate splicing this way, that means you can have, for example, your uh, muscle cells. This is the regular one, but you can have another cell that the gene is on the protein product is only A, B, and D. Exon C goes missing. And you can have another one that um, goes like this. Okay, so you can have another tissue that is A, C, and D. So this is what you call as alternate splicing. You have seen this in gene bank, gene bank records. This is called your splice variants. Okay. Very commonly, what kind of um, organs have splice variants? Usually, brain and testicles. I have no idea why, but brain and testicles have tends to have alternate splicing. Okay. So they are quite um, unique by itself. Anyone remember um, remember this thing called uh, VJD, uh, VJD joining or VDJ? I can't remember. VDJ? Yeah, or whatever. Anybody remember something like that? This is in your antibody, your immunoglobulins. No way, remember. Anyone? Let's look at that. So anyway, your immunoglobulins also have a lot of alternative splicing as well. This is why your 
immunoglobulin genes can actually undergo your different types of variants. So translation, because there can be alternative slicing, there can be more than one translation. So what you need to do is you go to the first translation. This is your actual sequence. So far so good? So let's look at your gene bank file for a little while. This gene, um, this is normally your gene symbol. Okay. So gene symbol is quite unique. SSH, no, SHH is your sonic hedgehog. Okay. So gene symbols are, are quite uniform by itself. Okay. Anybody know what is a sonic hedgehog? Anyone? It, do you know what is the actual Sonic Hedgehog? Hello? Have you heard of this name before, Sonic Hedgehog? Anyone, Johnson? Heard of this name before? The blue cartoon, yes, All right. So Sonic Hedgehog is this guy. The show. Uh, let's look at this Sonic Hedgehog, the, the blue guy. Uh, okay, this one is obviously not him. Uh, this one, something I look at. It. Okay. So Sonic Hedgehog is a very important gene. Um, that if there is mutation in Sonic Hedgehog, it's usually uh, lethal. Okay. Okay. If you don't have Sonic Hedgehog, you cannot even produce your fingers. Your fingers will be uh, all damaged. So it's a it's a pretty serious um, gene to play with. Okay. So essentially, this is how we start to deal with all the gene bank formats. So you can print out all the information that you want. What you also can do is you can actually generate your own sequence records. So in order to generate your own sequence records, you can use this sequence um, library. Okay, so let's try one at a time. So let's say you want to write your own sequence reports, okay? Which again, seldom you use this. So you want to say, let's say my sequence. And first you give it a data. <clears throat> so data, give it a data. So for example, you'll say DJ, give some data. So that is actually your regular sequence record. So my sequence, you have your data. Okay. And if you look at what is inside it, things, all the things that you need. Okay, the alphabets and so on. So this is how you can write your own sequence records to begin with. But we can actually do a bit more. <clears throat> <Okay>. <clears throat> Another one that you can you usually do is you import the sequence record itself. Okay, this is more sophisticated because sequence is just one thing. But what you want to do is, let's say you want to write your own gene bank file, then you import the whole sequence record. Okay. Uh, okay. And now you say that, change my sequence into your sequence record. Okay. So sequence record, First, it is you have to use a sequence, which is origin my sequence. So you put it into itself. Or you can actually just say that it's a sequence, right? You can just say that it's sequence, and then you type in whatever thing you want. So what? 
So my sequence is actually a um, record by itself. So let's look at it. This is actually your gym bank record already. Just that most of the information is not there. You only have sequence. You have sequence. Okay. You don't have ID. You don't have you have nothing. For example, what is your ID? There's nothing. Okay, your features, all this have nothing. So how do you actually do it? You just input everything by yourself. So now you want your ID to be something. Let's say KX. One, two, three, four, five. Then you have your ID. Okay. Make sense? So you can build your sequence record from scratch if you want to. Okay, you can put everything in. Your ID, let's say your description, you can put it in. Your name, you can put it in. So let's try. You can put in your description. Let's say uh, SEI Lecture 7. Testing. Okay, then after that, name equals to, well, test se sequence. Oh, what do I do? Okay, so you can actually put things in by yourself if you want to. But you realize that there's actually a lot of information. But you can actually do that, no problem. Okay, so this is how you can write your own sequence record if you want to. Okay. Make sense? So from there, you can actually write it out. You can actually write the whole sequence record out as well. So let's try. Mm. Okay, sequence, write what? I write my sequence, my file handle sequences will be my sequence. Okay, my handle will be. Um, Let's say what does it needs me to test handle file object to write to or uh, file name okay let's say a string so this is I say test db okay I want to write as format the format I want to write as your gene bank file okay so there's invalid white space in locus line so locus line is Locus line is your test sequence. So my name cannot be test sequence. Okay, protein needs an alphabet. Yeah, okay. So you realize that there's actually a lot of um thing that is still stuck inside. Okay. So here what we have is the sequence. New filter of protein alphabet. Let's go and hunt down my sequence in the first place. Where on earth is my sequence? This up. Because I need my alphabet there as well. So we do not have alphabet. So now I can't write. Okay. So let's go back. We can actually write the alphabet. Remember, we just have to inform bio. So now we can actually have a alphabet.
doesn't have this. Let's look at what on earth it has. Okay, unambiguous DNA. So let's use unambiguous DNA. Then we'll see if you can write it out now. Okay, now we can write out. So let's us look at our gene bank file, see what does it give us. Okay, now I have this test, which is actually my gene bank file. So let's look at it. What does it give us? We have just produced our first gene bank file and so see, this is all the records that we have because we have actually nothing very much. Our accession, we just have a GMM file and then it produced 25 because it's DNA. Uh, even the date is unknown and all this stuff. Then we have here. Okay, so you need not have every single thing. Okay, so if I want to have a bit more stuff, I can do this. Same, let's say if I want to have a bit more stuff, I will say that um, my sequence. So maybe I'll say source. Source, I put, um, I don't know, give you an organism name. Let's say my E. coli, Escherichia coli. That's my source. Okay. Then if I write out, my source will at least have something, right? So let's write out. SGB okay. uh, doesn't help doesn't help me right out. So uh, let's try it again. So sometimes it, it may not work depending on what you try to do with it. Okay. Yep, it doesn't show up. You need the source and the organism, so you need both of them at the same time. Okay. So features, all these you can start to piece up yourself, but it's a bit more tedious. But at least a very primary version of GMBank file is already there. So you can actually use it if you really want to. Okay. So as I said, you almost never need to write GMBank files yourself most of the time. Most of the time you download from NCBI and read it. Okay. But if you want, you can actually do it. Similarly, you can actually change your FASTA file into GMBank file. Okay. You can write your FASTA file and make it into GMBank file. Just that it doesn't have a lot of information. So far so good. Any problem? So are you able to at least try how do you get your FASTA file into your GMBank file based on the information that you have from last week? Or can you take your GMBank file and produce this corresponding FASTA file? Are you able to do that? Anyone? That means, can you at least use BioPython as a converter between FASTA file and GMAN files? Anyone can, can think of a way? Anybody want to try? <clears throat> anyone, anyone? Hello? Can you even conceive of a way to convert between your GMAN file and VESTA file?
okay, give you five minutes to go and think about it. How do you, how can you do it? Okay, once you have some thoughts already, then you can raise up your hands. You may not have the correct thoughts, but see what's the simplest way that you can take a GMAN file and make it into a FESTA file. Anyone thought of something? That means let's say if somebody gives you this GMAN file, how are you going to get yourself into a FESTA file? <clears throat> Think of a way to do it. Yeah, but Python documentation page got the answer, correct? But before you go to answer, think of your, think of how you can do it. The yeah, Ambrose, you're right, but answer that. But think of how you can do it without looking at that, without looking at the documentation. <clears throat> okay, so let's try Nabil. Any idea? Nabi, are you there? Oh, Kui, any idea? Import IO, yes, you use import IO, correct? The sequence IO. Okay, Kui, can you help? After you, let's say you read the GMAN file, how you're going to produce a FESTA file. What is some of the ways that you can do it? I'm not asking you to do it. Change the format. Okay, Rebecca, change the format. Maybe, let's try. Okay. What happened if you do this? <clears throat> So let's say I read the GMAN files itself. Okay. And then I want the corresponding FESTA file. Okay. So let us let me just do it. Can I even try something like this? Okay. Um I read, then I say my sequence. Okay, so let's say I read all my records first. And after that, <clears throat> can I actually just write the whole record out? Is that what you're trying to say? Rebecca, is that what you're trying to say? Now I read a GMAN file. Can I actually do something like sequence IO? Just now write, we write a file, and then we have something, we have a format, can I just change to a FESTA? Is that what is that what you're looking for? Kinda okay. So let's try it. the sequence is in this GMAN records. So let's put it in here to see whether can we write something. Okay. And what is the file name? The file name maybe we call it a test a FESTA. See whether can you write? We have no idea. Try. It. Okay, so now in my lecture, there's this test A. Let's read and see what happens. Yeah, close enough. This is somewhat close enough. It doesn't give you all the information, but close enough. At least you can produce your FESTA file. Essentially, what it does is it takes this and it merge with the. So it actually takes the version combine it with the definition. Yep, you can do that. <clears throat> okay. 
obviously it doesn't give you all the information that you have here because it takes a bit more effort. But you can actually use it to produce different things. So I can actually even do the reverse. What happens if I take this guy and I make it into a, a Jinbang file and see what happens? I take a Festa file and make it a Jinbang file. Okay. So what I do is um, I will actually copy down this whole part. Here I kind of dump it first. So I start from this. Okay. So my this is my Festa file. So I change this to Festa. Okay. So I don't care about the name first. Okay, the records I don't care. I just simply say records anyway. Here I read the FESTA file. So I have a FESTA file, I read the FESTA file, train some records, and then I write the records into a test, let's say I call it test B, my GMAN file. And then I write into a GMAN file. Let's see if this works. Run it. Seems to work. But let's us look at the results. Now I've got test B. See what does it produce? It should produce nothing. So it doesn't work this way. It doesn't work on the reverse side. Okay. So usually, that's why we always have Jimbang file as the primary source, unless you know how to get to the FESTA file. Okay. So Jimbang file is more important in that sense. Okay. Because Jimbang file contains all the information, FESTA file doesn't contain all the information that you need to write into a Jimbang file. Okay, so that tells you that you can go from Jim Bank to Festa file and not the opposite way because you actually lose a lot of information. All right. <clears throat> now you can actually have more informative descriptions as well. So let's look at the annotations. Sometimes you can have the source. This is what we have. You can have some certain cases. You can have your uh, database references. So all these can you can have. Then within itself, we have covered all this already in your sequence features. You can have the type of features. So the type of features can be a CDS, a gene, so on, so on and so forth. It can have a lot of different things. Okay. So here is what we have in the first place, your features. So this, the source is actually the feature type. The qualifiers is the rest of it, the location. So you can start to piece up all the information from it. So you kind of look at what we have done just now to pull out all the information. Okay, it works the same way. Then from there, you can start to print out all the data that you want. You can process all the data that you want. You can write it out into a table or whatever form. Okay. So which means that it is actually quite possible <clears throat> to give you a gym bank file and ask you to produce a table. Okay, a table, let's say you can have the, um, let's say if I want to produce this table for somebody have Excel. Okay. Can you actually take your GMAN file and produce this table? So, let me just run it. Okay, can I have this table, which is the name, the description, the organism, uh, the molecule type, etc. etc. And this finally the sequence, so on and so forth. You can actually produce something like this. They can actually produce in a tabular form. And essentially that is what your assignment is. 
uh, going to do. So essentially, that's that's the main part of the whole thing. You can actually use the sequence to change the format. Remember, just now we cannot do it directly, but we can actually force it to change into a format that we want. Okay, your FESTA file into a GMAN file and so on. We can actually try that to see what happens. So originally what we have is So I have my records. Okay. So let's say I have my records, for example, records zero. Uh, what? I can't go record zero is out of reach. Records, record. Let me just keep this out like out. Records. Oops, okay. The star for the star. Oh, okay. Ah, so why it doesn't work this? Let's change the file name. Okay, so let me just repeat the same process again. Maybe this time it works because just now my file name was not changed. So let me just write out. Let's say records. B. This is a change into a gym bank. Let me try again to change from FESTA into gym bank file to see whether it works or not. Now it may work. Let's try. Okay. Uh, yeah, it will give you an error. Because the your FESTA file doesn't know whether it is this a DNA or RNA or whatever. So it doesn't work that way. Okay. So it's always from Jim Bang you can change to FESTA. FESTA you cannot change to Jim Bang because the sequence Python, BioPython has no idea what the sequence is. Is it going? That means basically what to write here. Is it RNA, a protein or what? That's why we can't change it. Okay, so far so good. So what we already have at the moment is let's say you up to here. Okay, now we have a gym bank file records. Okay, so we go back to your gym bank again. Records. So we have a whole list of gym bank records. Okay. So let's say I want record uh, the first record. Tell you something. What you can do is you can actually use this format function to actually print the format out for whatever you want. For example, you want to change the format into a FESTA. Just now we pump it out in the FESTA file. You can actually go directly here and change, use a format and change the format into a FESTA. So this is the FESTA record that you have. Okay, It just produced this into your uh, FESTA file for you. So you can actually print it out for your own use. Okay, So the, all these are lists, but you take care, uh, there's a slash n here. Okay, so far so good. Any problem? Okay, this is what we will not be covered the slicing. Slicing simply means that let's say you have a record, you can actually pull out a section of your record. Okay, just briefly go through, we will not be doing it. You can pull out a section of your record. For example, you can actually pull out individual sequences if you want to. Because you can have um for example let's just say here okay uh your 
in prototype. And then we say that we want Escherichia coli on MG1655 and complete. Let's see what it gives us. You can actually have the complete chromosome. So the complete chromosome is 4 million bases. So if you look at MG1655 K12, the complete genome is actually quite big. Um, not exactly very big, but big enough. So you see there's different genes you have from the first gene, second gene, third gene, and so on. So it's a whole long list of genes. Now, having said that, what you can do is you can pull out using the location of the gene to pull out into your own gene bank record if you want to. That's what slicing means. Okay. Usually, we seldom want to do it unless you are met with um, a full gene bank record. Then you have to play around with it. It's possible. Okay. So here, your E. coli has about 4,000 genes. So you will list out all the 4,000 genes for you. Okay, you can actually do that. Another common usage, which sometimes you will do is this. Let's say if you have a plasmid and you want to change the start position of the plasmid. Okay, that can work as well. So this is what you have. So let's say you have a plasmid. Okay, so this is still slicing. Okay. But slicing is a bit more detailed, so I will not go through that. Very often you can have a, let's say a circular genome. For example, your plasmid, you can actually change the start position. Let's say you can shift all the records from position 1 to position, let's say 300. Basically, you are changing the start position. Where does the first position come from? For circular genome, like your plasmid or your bacterial DNA, which is your bacterial genome, which is circular, where does, who actually decide where is position number one? It's up to you. The only problem that you need to face with is be, take note of the features that is across the zero position. Okay. Only need to take note across zero position. Okay. And remember, just now we have this thing called a strand. We have strand and anti strand strand. So let's look at that. So your gym band record in itself. Um, strand. Of its strength. Okay. Okay. So you can look at the database references, um, annotations. Okay. So annotations contains a lot. So in the first annotation. In annotations itself. So annotations with all this. Okay. So you start to look for all the different things you have. You go to editor, let's look at the gym band record. Yeah. So the strand will actually be. Um, yeah, here it doesn't have the strand because you're talking about only one sequence. Okay. So when you're talking about bacterial sequence or genomic sequence, you have different things called a strand as well. Okay. So here you can see that you can actually have different translation table and so on. Okay. And it gives you a lot more information if you want to deal with it. So you can have things like um, 
for example here tells you what it, the position the locus you can have a pseudo complement so pseudo complement simply means that it the sequence is is actually an, at the opposite strand so you see you look at this it tells you that the gene is actually not in the current strand but it's actually in the opposite strand all right <clears throat> so you can start to play around with all these different records if you want to so far any problem the very first thing is make sure that you can you are able to read the gene bank file and then go and dig through one gene bank record at a time Try to pull out all the different pieces of information that you need. Okay, and really that's what we want you to be able to do. So, for example, um, let's say here you should get your uh, one feature record, so the start and stop position and so on. Okay, it takes a bit of digging, but it's possible to do. Okay, so we start off you with something simple. Can you read the GMAN file and print the description? So this is description. Print the description first. Then you go on to can you look at the um, records itself? Look at the number of bases that it has. Then try to find the individual sequence records. Okay, so once you can do these few parts, at least you are quite safe. You should be able to dig through your regular Jim Meng file. Okay, so far any problem? Uh, next week and the week after is your term break, so there is no class. But 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 make sure you go and write up your um, learning portfolio. Okay, any issues? Any question? Are you able to at least have some idea how to do your tutorial now? Hello? Question? Yes. Okay, kind of. Yes. Okay. Once you're able to do your tutorial, then that's good. Okay, so we will go through your tutorial on Thursday. Make sure you have done your stuff. At least do parts of it. <coughs> all of them are doable. Okay, that's all for today. Have fun. Yeah, Joanne, so if you when, when you reach back Singapore, safely back in Singapore, uh, please let us know. Especially you still have your stay home notice and so on. So please let us know as well. OK. Bye bye.